Thank you so much for 20,000 subscribers. A big thank you to each and every one of you that watch our videos all the way through to the end. Leave us those likes and leave us comments on our videos. Just hearing the feedback within the comment section about things that you may have enjoyed or didn't enjoy and your own personal journeys in cricket, it fills us with a lot of joy. 20,000 subscribers is no small feat. So to celebrate that today, we are going to take you through our five favorite batters of all time. And on top of that, we're also going to give away two free video analysis to two of you lucky subscribers. All you need to do to be eligible to win one of those video analysis is to make sure you subscribe, like the video, comment your five favorite batsmen in the comment section below, and as well in that comment, make sure you give us a way to contact you, whether that be an Instagram handle, a Twitter handle, anything you feel appropriate. This list that we each give is by no means the five best batsmen of all time. It is just the five batters that we feel have influenced our cricketing journey the most across time. Me and Byron are going to start from our number five favorite batsmen and work all the way up to number one. We don't know each other's list, so there might be some potential crossover. Let's see. As you can see, Byron's gone a new age and he's got his list on his phone. I've written it down on a piece of paper, old school. I'm saving the trees. <laughs> he's saving the trees. Um, all right, Byron, what's your number five? So my number five, and yeah, is a little bit of country bias, is Graham Smith. So he knows that I'm from South Africa, what he did as an opening batsman in our conditions to average 49.08 as an opener with the majority of the games being played here in SA is phenomenal and the toughest part or the toughest time to bat in a test match is as an opening batsman the ball moves a lot it swings a lot and you also have to then control how it goes late in the game when you come out for the second dig so to do all of that i think he was fantastic he was one of our youngest captains he had the best captaincy record as a south african and then also he was very unconventional but mentally strong. Unbelievably mentally strong. Unbelievably. So Not to mention that, like when, considering Graham Smith has got, I think his highest average batting in the fourth innings of a test match, which is unheard of. No, it's no, disgusting. It, it, it was insane. And to come out in some of those fourth innings and win games with hundreds there, yeah. with as a left-hander, which is tough in test match cricket with the way the ball turns out of the foot marks, it's incredible. But I think we can all remember that moment in Sydney against Australia where he came out with a broken hand after having broken it in the first innings to come and try and save the test match of a series that we had basically already won. So I think that that was massive and I think that really pushed him forward in a lot of people's minds. Also staying with left-handers, my number five is Brian Lara. Um, pretty good call. What I really enjoyed about Brian Lara was how free-flowing he was I always took the attack to the bowlers and you'll see that is very prevalent in my list at least. I love that type of batsman. And also, realistically, no other batsman can say they've scored a 400 not out in test cricket. He's just a cut above the rest when it came to some of the feats he's accomplished. But to be fair, he's on my list as well. So he was at number three. Oh, we've three. got, here's the first crossover. He's at number three, but also having scored 400 in a test match, that is fantastic. But then we also have to rem remember that he scored the five and one not out in a first class yeah, game. Yeah, first class match, yeah. So to do that's incredible. And the way he went about his business, trying to carry a team based on his batting performance alone, and he carried a team that wasn't as strong as they were in the past. I think he still made that West Indies team during that time competitive when they might not have been otherwise. I remember this video growing up, what, well, watching this one video growing up when Brian Lara was bowled the exact same ball in test cricket. Exact same line, exact same length. The one he just absolutely smacked through mid-wicket, the next one he coughed past point, and the third one he punched off the back foot straight down the ground. I was like, okay, that's a serious batsman. Yeah, I know, he, he could do magical things. And that back swing of his was so nice and fluid yeah. and nice and big. He just gave himself a chance. And his presence was enough to put pressure on other teams. He was always the guy that teams wanted to get out when they were bowling against West Indies. Okay, number four. So, number, the number five for me was very mentally tough. Um, I, I would say number four, there is some mental strength here, but the fluidity of his game, it was amazing to watch. Um, it's Kumar Sangakara for me. I mean, to average 57.4 in test match cricket over the period of time, playing a lot of games in the subcontinent where it's really hot and it gets tough to bat. It, it was just fantastic and he was just so elegant when he batted. He made it look like it was easy a lot of the time. But I think we also can't forget those four consecutive hundreds in the 2015 ODI World Cup. He's the only person to ever score four consecutive ODI hundreds. So looking at that, I think he definitely has to be up there as one of the greatest batsmen of all time. Realistically, people will probably say 
subcontinent batsman. Probably scored most of his runs in the subcontinent. But I think from what I remember, his stats in England are really good. That's why he also went and played county cricket there for such a long time and performed exceptionally well in those leagues. Um, and it's funny, <laughs> the first three names we've mentioned are all left-handers. So we don't know if that's going to be a trend going through further, but I guess we'll see. Okay, my number four is the first right-hander, so I absolutely baited you all. It's Ricky Ponting. Um, <laughs> with Ricky Ponting, the one thing I enjoyed about him a lot was his aggression and passion on the field, which will also be in my number two batsman. But I think Ricky Ponting took it more of a accepted level in international cricket. I know a lot of people give Vera Kohli a bunch of hassle about how hard he's on the field and the passion and stuff. A lot of people don't enjoy it. Me personally, I love it. I love a batsman that wants to win the game by himself, that wants to take it all the way across the line. Um, as well, top of that, it was extremely fluid. He had beautiful technique and one of the best looking cut, uh, best looking pull shots in his mouth. Yeah, so that's another crossover here. He's also on my list. Um, to have a test average of 51.85, I think that, that would determine that you're quite a good batsman over the time period that he played. 51? 51.85. I thought he finished on like 56, but... 51.85. But then those last two years must have been pretty rough. Yeah, no, I know was. he had a, a weaker patch his last two seasons, but like I know he was up there with Carlos and Sangakara and those guys at that 56-57 average at that point. But having said that, I mean, what, to play as long as he played, you'd expect there, you'd expect there to be some dips in form. Also, the pressure of captain for a long period of time. I think he won one or two World Cups. He won as two captain. World Cups. Two as captain. World Cups as captain as well. Serious batsman. Serious, serious. And that pull shot, it's one of my favourite shots to play. So, watching him play throughout his career, it was really something to behold. And I tried to mimic a lot of his skill in the pull shot into my own game and try to craft my own game through that as well. Talking about a great innings, that 438. Yeah. In SA, I think he got 180 or 170 yeah. something in that innings. Disgusting, absolutely disgusting innings. Like, didn't put a foot wrong. Didn't put a foot wrong for that whole innings. Felt like he took the game completely away. Luckily, we had Gibbs that day that came off with Smith and uh, at the end Boucher. Yeah. But uh, Ponting was disgusting that game. Right. Yeah. Let's. That was uh, a scary shall we move on to our number threes? Oh, well, I've already mentioned my number three. So, so I've said a lot about Brian, but Brian is my number three. Okay. So my number three is someone that not a lot of players are even going to think of mentioning and that is Damien Martin. Good to me Damien Martin had probably the best timing I've ever seen from a batsman on international level. I've watched games where he defended balls for four. No extension, solid front foot defenses straight past the bowler for four. He never looked like he forced a shot. The only time I remember him really forcing shots was in the couple of T20s he played. His stats were ridiculous. People never realized how good he was. I think he had a 48 test average, um, 41 or 42 ODI average, and he had a 30 odd um, T20 average in the few he played with a very decent strike rate. I think that guy's one of those guys that just got lost somehow because he was also playing in such a prevalent time for Australia. You had Mark or Steve or Ponting, Gilchrist, Hayden Langer. You had yeah. so many good batsmen that a 48 average almost didn't cut it, but he would have walked into any other team at that point. Yeah, no, definitely. I think pleasing on the eye, really, really good to watch. Very good looking batsman. Always, always looked good when he batted, played some match when he knocks. I think he's a fantastic cricketer. Wish, wish I could have seen more of him during my life at least. One of my favorite videos on YouTube, I've actually got it saved. Um, so every now and again, when I feel a bit down in the dumps, like I chuck it on, is that I think it was made by Rob Linder, and it's the Damien Marta Pure Elegance and Timing Compilation. It's just, it's great. Go give it a watch. Okay, right up to number two. So, Ricky Ponting, spoken about. <laughs> okay, so is there anything else you'd like to say about Ponting? Have we covered it enough no, detail? I added it there. Just, yeah, I enjoyed, enjoyed the way he always tried to find a way to win a cricket match. He was part of that Australian team where they would push for results at the expense of potentially losing the game. Yeah. And I enjoyed the way they went about that because... I mean, that's why they were so dominant in that era as well. They were always, they always backed themselves to win. They never really feared losing a game. I think I read somewhere um, in the one Ashes test, England went out first and scored 550. And then Australia went out second and scored also over 500 in the second deck. And then coming into day five, on the morning of day five, they were... England were 80 runs or something ahead with only one or two wickets down 
And Pontin went to the team and he's like, guys, we, we need to win this, but everyone needs to believe we can win this. And Hussey went, no, no, you, you, no, there's no way. And Pontin's yeah. like, if we do this right, we've got Jane Warren, we've got Bretley, uh, we've got McGraw, let's, let's get it done. And they went out there, they bowled England out, and they ended up chasing 170, 168, I think it was exactly, in 33 overs, and won the game there. Yeah. So, trying to find a way to win, I think that's a, a massive skill in any sports person and any captain. South Africa. All of our South African friends will know that noise very well. <laughs> okay. My number two, and I'm sure a lot of our viewers will be happy about this one, probably not that he's not number one, but my number two favorite batsman of all time is definitely Vera Kohli, a modern grade of the game, to average 50 in all three formats at decent strike rates, being probably one of the best chasers the world's ever seen in constructing innings while chasing a target. Um, I think there's two countries where he struggled, where his stats aren't that great, and that's England and New Zealand. But Very similar already, conditions. He already started turning the England one He's already around. started turning England around. He's in a bit of a lean patch now, I think it's two years without 100. But saying that, if you compare to like the all time greats, or considered all time greats like a Tendulka, Tendulka got 100, 100 in 700 innings. Kohli's on about 450 innings, and he's already on 70 international innings. He's an absolute monster, and for such a long period of time, he was, and I think he probably still is, the one wicket that everyone wants to get when they play against him. No, 100%. I think he's a fantastic player, and I'll get I'll get more on it just now. But I just think from from what he's done for a prolonged period of time, being in all three formats as he has, it is, it is something special. It really is. It is, and then as well with Kohli, he's got almost the perfect technique that you want to teach a youngster coming through. Like you don't want to teach someone how to bat like a Smith or Ave or stuff, because there's a natural there's a lot of natural ability and just flair there. It's not really technical aspects that you can learn, but Kohli's technique is extremely solid. Oh, I agree. Yeah. Right, before we head into our number ones, we're going to go through some honorable mentions. Byron has prepared three, I've got three. We're not going to really cover them in depth, we're just going to name them and then we'll get to our number ones. Byron, what's your three honorable mentions? Okay, so my three honorable mentions, um, it will be Baba Azam. I think he's been fantastic over this period of time really 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 good and I think the way he's going about transforming even his test stats now I think he is going to be considered a great when he's done with his career so I think he's done a lot of work there and he looks good when he bats and he just had a fantastic T20 World Cup as well um, then Shivnaran Chandrapal um, on top of what I said about Ooh, interesting stance by that but how good was he though? No, he also no, had a 50, uh, over 50 average in yeah, test no, 100%. Um, so what I said about Lara is that he carried a team on his own. Uh, that was a little bit of a cop out there. Uh, Chandrapal. <laughs> a little bit of a cop. Chand so what, what, didn't they have another guy as well? One more batsman, uh, opener. No, the number three saw, uh, Ramnaresh saw one was yeah, decent one, as number well. Number three, okay, yeah. But not, not to the level of these two. No, I'd not say. close. Too so far. Chandrapal to do what he did, he always batted in the middle order, quite, quite low in the middle order, and he'd have to bat with the tail a lot of the time. And to construct innings the way he did, I think it's fantastic. So if he batted a bit higher, I feel he'd have scored more hundreds and his average might have even been a bit higher than that. Yeah, for sure. And then the last one is Raul Dravid. I mean, when we speak about mental strength and the ability to bat for long periods of time and look good while doing it, um, Raul Dravid did it massively for India. Um, I think the way he went about his business was really good. He was always impeccable in everything that he did and the way he played just looked good at the same time. And think with the role of he was an utter perfectionist in everything yeah. he did. You could yeah. see everything go away. Was really he was really trying to be perfect. No, which I'm, is something to strive for. Very difficult, but something to strive for at least. Yeah, but I think also you look at his runs and average over that period of time, he, he should be considered great within his own right. So we've spoken about the one already. My one honorable mention is Kumo Sangakara. I think we've said enough about that. Number two, Ian Bell. Again, same a name that people won't really consider. Same as Damien Martin. Extremely fluid, really good timing, very pleasing and I loved watching him bat. And number three, South African born England representative Kevin Peterson. And with him it's almost similar to that Brian Laura effect where he would go in and just try and dominate the team. Like he would go out and show, well Laura and Coley and Peterson, they would all go out and show, listen, I am here to play, I am here to win the game. You guys have got trouble if you don't get me out of it. 100%. And some of those Indians he's played where 
he's struck at virtually 18 in a test match to put teams under pressure. Mm. I think he took a lot of pressure off the guys batting around him and allowed them to play their games without stressing about what's going to happen with the game going forward. Yeah. Right, the moment we've been waiting for. Number one. So, <laughs> there's one name that's not on your list and there's one name that's not on my list. And you know me very well. So you, you obviously know, know who well. <laughs> you know who my number one is. So, so I'll go first. Okay, you go first. And I had a cop out earlier. We're gonna have another cop out now. No, you can't do that. You're not allowed to cheat. Seeing as though they're best friends and they've played at the same union for quite a while, I've gone for Virat and Ab. So Virat Kohli and Ab de Villiers as my number one joint number ones. Because I just think what they've done as a pair in modern cricket, they've approached the game differently, the way they go about it. But both of them have really, really put the game of cricket out there on the map. Um, Kohli averaging 15 or three formats, like Zenon said earlier. I think, I think it's fantastic to be able to dominate cricket in three different formats, no matter the team, no matter the conditions. It's, it's something special. And the way he's gone about it and doing it with a lot of captaincy thrust upon him as well, it's, it's massive. And I enjoy the way he goes about trying to win as much as he can. Okay, be, before you go on to AB, right? Because anyone that knows me knows AB will be my number one. And he's on number one on my list, right? So let's discuss AB properly considering he's retired from all forms of cricket now as well. Um, I don't think many batsmen in the history of the game could do what AB could do. No, no, uh, you, you get those special talents where they can just, they make it look like they can do whatever they want, when they want, how they want, to whomever they want. And I think some of the things he did was fantastic. I mean, from a South African point of view, Dale Stain has always been one of our best bowlers. Before Dale Stain had his injuries yeah he was considered the great just based on stats at least i think at that point he had a 20.8 average and a 38 strike rate yeah he was considered by far the best seam bowler of all time based on stats and then and what ab did to him in that ipl twice uh, well twice over the course of two or three years yeah. it, it was it was ridiculous i remember um, that yorker um leg stump almost a york on leg stump where he gave space hit him off the back foot over cover for six it's like no that's disgusting you're not allowed to do that surely yes. that it seems like he was playing a video game at times. It's, it's playing cheat codes. Yeah, for sure. Up, no. up, down, down, triangle, square. Yeah, 149 <laughs> of 44 against Swiss Indies on pink day. But, but you look at that and you say, yes, fantastic, he can do that. Yeah. But then you look at the reverse side where he scored... What, the 33 of 290 or yeah, something? Yeah, like to, to try and save a game for his team. And it just shows the competitiveness that this man had and what, he, what lengths he go to to try and win a game or save a game for his team. Uh, special talent the way you could do things but the ability to play within yourself at the same time I think that takes a lot of mental determination and saying all of that at the same time he gets a lot of grief for his World Cup performances okay so this is actually something that I did go and read a lot about people always going oh well, AB's choking AB's choking AB's average in World Cups was over 70 it's well it's close it was 67 I think yeah or 67 like Considering that, that is not a man that chokes under in World Cup pressure. The no. semi-final we lost in 2015, he also got a 60 odd, I think, against in New quick Zealand. Time in in very quick time with the rain coming yeah. and stuff. So it's very harsh just because the team didn't perform him because he didn't get a trophy. People want to lower his performance level and but say he's not at the level of his other guys because he never got a trophy. But I don't think that's fair. But you look at that and then his average is what it is, but he also got run out a few times that wasn't his fault in World Cups where he could have been the difference in those games. I'm the thing is, people also go like, you can always say no, but the thing is, running is a partner thing and you need to trust your partner. You have to trust. So, it's, it's a tough one. It's very tough. But yeah, I mean, if you look at both sides of the coin, AB, the way he's gone about his business, fantastic, has revolutionized cricket, has changed the way a lot of younger people coming into the game view it, and I think it's going to change the game going forward. But having said that, the way Virat has gone about his stuff, at the same time, it's also... It's, it's almost like two opposite ends of the coin. You yeah. got this man that is conventional, but also completely unconventional in the way he plays. Yeah. And you've got this side that is almost textbook perfect batting. Yeah. Constructing an innings, taking a team to victory. Yeah. And both of them look equally good doing it in their own ways. Both of them are extremely fluent. Both of them have got incredible technique when they want to. Both of them are exceptionally special figures. Yeah, exceptionally special. So I think we've been really blessed, blessed having those two in our generation for growing up and being able to watch them, at least. Yeah, no, 
Uh, I, I've been fortunate with the cricket I've been able to watch because I saw some of the greatest Aussie batters. I've seen a South African team that was quite dominant for a while and now you've seen an Indian team that has played really well throughout mm. and this New Zealand team that's coming through now has also played really well and what I think I like about this New Zealand team at the moment is there are some special cricketers within the team but it's more of a full team effort yeah, than I always, think some of the other teams team are effort. going around. Yeah, for sure. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you did enjoy. Please remember to like the video and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Also remember to comment on your five favorite batsmen of all time and leave your Twitter handle or your Instagram handle so that there is a way that we can contact you if you are one of the lucky recipients of the video analysis. He says, he says. <laughs>